ages 12 to 16. This is when the big why question needs to be answered without omissions and with reality. They want to make different choices in their parents. This is called individuation. Begin to develop that self-assertion skill and they can defend their boundaries, have more conflicts, can struggle to integrate the two sets of parents, two or three or four, just because we've been in foster care and I say we, doesn't mean we haven't formed an attachment to our foster family. I have done training on open adoption. Something that I do also is open foster care. Which we're having open relationships with previous foster homes. I still, and I'm a grown woman, I still have a relationship with my foster family. They were my family. They grew me up. They are a big part of my life. So we don't want to cause this identity confusion. Feeling different can feel like a curse at this age because they want so desperately to fit in. So provide them with all the facts, the good facts and the information about their story. Be supportive and listen more. Give permission and reassurance to talk. Accept their anger is valid. Again, provide books, a therapist really important at this age, and a support group with other teen adoptees. How to approach teens. Adolescents, there's a lot of insecurities that come up. We are here for you no matter what. We love you. I love you. I want you. We want you. We may think they've heard it 20 times, but it hasn't stuck yet. I give you permission to be different from me. You are different. You're, we all come into the world with our own minds. We are influenced by each other, culturally, religiously, ethnically, racially. We all influence each other and we have memories together, but we all have a different way of seeing the world. And we do develop our own sets of values, morals, and ethics. And it's at adolescence where they start to try on these different roles. So I give you permission to be different from me. I see you, I hear you. My love is bigger than your hate. My care is more lasting than your rejection. It's, it is not what you do, but who you are that I love. I will not give up on you. Sometimes, and when you have kids who have attachment challenges, they're vulnerable in attachment. They do a push-pull. They don't feel trusting because of their attachment trauma. They're projecting their blueprint of what happened to them on you. You're going to do the same like them. I can't trust you. I'm going to push you away because they're testing you. They're testing you and they need to know that you're going to stick with them. You're not giving up. You're with them. You're permanent. That means so, so much. And you may not get the results right away. Like, oh, they understand we're here, but they'll come to you. You'll see different subtle ways where the relationship shifts. You know, it takes a lot of vulnerability for kids to be able to ask to get their needs met, especially when there's been attachment trauma. So we want to respect it when they do open what's called the window opens. We want to be right there to catch them. I will not give up on you. This has been hard. Name the elephants. You know, we're having a hard week. This has been a really hard week. Let's sit and talk about this. We love each other. We're not giving up on each other here. We're going to put the problem as the problem. We're going to put respect for all of us dealing with this together. I have confidence in you. I have confidence in us. I am proud of you. This is hard and you're doing it. So 16 to 22 plus, as you see, I'm a big girl and I'm still dealing with this. We don't get over it. It is a lifelong process. Youth try to find their place in the adult world are often overwhelmed as they search for their identity. That's if we don't provide all these markers for them. They will feel challenged as they explore school, work, and housing. Tips for professionals. Learn the seven core issues in adoption. Remember, life-changing experiences that occur through adulthood, such as moving, death, graduation, divorce, birth, college, can trigger unresolved issues of adoption. It's scary for kids to feel the pressure of having to leave their families, and it can feel like a huge loss 
to leave your either foster family or adoptive family. Because what happens is kids do a lot of splitting. I either love you or I don't love you because I'm leaving. I don't love you anymore. <laughs> That's a way of coping with this life transition. And if you can see it as that and help them understand it's okay to still love us and we're still going to stay connected in this transition. Treat the subject of personal or family history with sensitivity at this time. Offer alternative strategies for dealing with gaps in information. You know, we wish we knew to provide this. And we know how important this is for you to reculturate, which means go back into your culture. Live in Harlem because you're a Black woman now. And you've lived in a white family your whole life. We understand and respect you need to go and reculturate yourself. We respect that. As opposed to the parent going, oh, you're not moving to Harlem. Wait a sec. Yes. This is part of her identity. She needs to go and be in her tribe, in her culture. That is her birthright. She has not had this. We need to respect their choices at this age, be open to listening. Remember a youth's desire to seek information about his or her birth family doesn't mean they don't love you or need support. Learn about adoption support groups in your area and refer families. This is the lifelong trajectory in adoption and foster care. Adoption is a fundamental life altering event, like a wheel it rolls along for a lifetime. On the rim, there's a lot of secrecy. We don't talk about this, but we are rethinking adoption and foster care in the 21st century. We are talking, we are sharing. It helps a foster or adopted child make sense and live a full life, knowing what happened to them and knowing that it's not what's wrong with you about what's happened to you and you're having these feelings for a reason because of what happened you're going to experience grief you're going to experience shame was this my fault you're going to question you're going to have guilt parents have guilt this is not only for the child this is for the parents the birth parents and the adoptive or foster or kinship families you're also going to experience this. And let's all have compassion and empathy for each other. The world is evolving. 